Hello everyone, this is Apostle Misha Softier welcoming you to this Tuesday night edition of Studying the Word. And um, <clears throat> this evening, we're going to be talking about, and, and, and this kind of puts us into lesson four, we'll be talking about the uh, Church of Sardis, of the four, or I'm sorry, the seven churches in the book of Revelation. We're on the fourth one and it's uh, the uh, Church of Sardis. And it is known as the dead church, folks. Okay, so we got some things to say about that. It's not going to be a long uh, lesson because there's not much uh, in it. But it's significant. And uh, for those that are tuning in, we've already spoken about um, the uh, church of Ephesus, which was the uh, loveless church. We talked about the church of Smyrna, which was the persecuted church. We uh, talked about the church in Paragamos, uh, which was the uh, compromising church. I thought we talked about the church of Thyatira, but I, maybe we haven't gotten there yet. Um, but anyway, if we haven't, we'll probably get there. I thought we did. Let me see. Um, did we? Um, let me see. We spoke about Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos. I thought we did. We spoke about it, one of the other ones. But anyway, <clears throat> oh yeah, we took yeah, yeah we spoke about the corrupt church, the Church of Thyatira. So we spoke about uh, let's see, we dealt with the Church of Ephesus that was one, the Church of Smyrna that was two, uh, the Church of uh, uh, in Paragamos per, uh, that was three, uh, the Church in uh, Thyatira which was the corrupt church number four. So. Uh, I believe today we're going to be talking about, or, or let me see, let me make sure we're in the right place. Yeah, yeah, okay, so actually we're talking about the fifth church today, so that'll be the church in Sardis. Okay, so that's where we're at, so probably I, I need to go back and rechange this to this being lesson five. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just open up with a word of prayer. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining me <clears throat> this evening. And um, so, Father, we <clears throat> we thank you, and Lord, we pray that you'll anoint this time of study, Lord, just to bring the the word out to our hearts that you would have as we study, Lord. Uh, uh, we study your word, and that you, Lord, you speak to each one of us, uh, Lord, and seal it to our spirits. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen, amen. So, folks, um, again, uh, if you, you're new to this, you need, then really I would encourage you to go back on uh, uh, my Facebook pages here. You can look back and review the other churches because all of them are really important and it lays a good foundation uh, for what we're doing and why we're doing it. Very briefly, okay, seven churches were churches that were uh, the Lord had critiqued, um, of those seven, five of them had already begun to apostatize. Only two of them passed the critique. Um, they are a barometer of what occurred in that dispensation when the revelation was given by the Lord to the Apostle John. And it was put into the scriptures that, so that we could read them today because it's to be a barometer not only from to that or for that dispensation, but all the way through time up until this dispensation and any future dispensation if the Lord tarries and doesn't come immediately or, or soon. All right, so how, how do we measure ourselves? How does the, the church, which isn't just a building, folks, but we need to remember that all churches are comprised of people. And so we as individuals need to read this and apply this to ourselves because every one of us make up the uh, corporate body of Christ or make up a church, which in, in turn... Uh, becomes the corporate body of Christ. So we, we need to look at this and uh, and, and we need to learn. <clears throat> in, in, in the book of Revelation, and I emphasize 
it, because so many people call uh, call it Revelations. We're in Revelations. It's not Revelations, folks. It's the book of Revelation, and it's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can see that in chapter 1, verse 1. That's how the book was named. So in it, the Lord continually throughout the book of Revelation provides a revelation of who he is and, 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 and what he does. Um, in the beginning, as he greets, uh, his opening greeting to each one of these seven churches, which are churches that are in uh, what would probably be modern day Turkey, or at least that vicinity today, um, they they call them the seven churches of Asia, but that was Asia at that time, okay, or, or considered uh, a portion part of Asia. Um, what um, what had happened was that the by sixty five A D, the church had already begun to apostatize, and so. Um, of the critique, only two of them really passed the muster. That was the church of, I believe, Sar Sardis, I think it was, or or was it the church of, no, it's church of Smyrna and the church of uh, Philadelphia. The others, they didn't do too well. But we need to look, folks, because if we want to know how, how we should be functioning as Christians and how our churches should function, we have really... A perfect model here in the seven churches of, uh, of uh, Asia in what to do and what not to do. And we understand that in every one of these churches, the Lord had some positive things to say about every one of them. Okay, but the negativity, the negative, the problems, it was enough to kill the church. And I know there are some people that say, well, you know, let's not concentrate on the negative let's 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 just concentrate on the positive and that seems to be the secular way of thinking about things today but folks uh, it's the small foxes that destroy the, the the vine it's the little leaven that leavens the lump it's the root of bitterness uh, that that causes many to be defiled so you have to look at the the things that are being done wrong and you have to correct them because if you don't uh, you're going to end up spreading a uh, situation just like cancer right through the entire church and killing it. That's how churches apostatize. That's how churches split. That's how churches get into materialism. That's how churches get into false doctrine. Okay, it doesn't take much. That's uh, how why the Lord separates the wheat from the chaff. And but when they grow up, they grow up together. They look the same uh, until they 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 hit maturity. <clears throat> and um, in times that we're living in today, we have a harlot church that. It says the same things we do. Praise God, hallelujah. We stay sing the same songs. Uh, uh, go to Sunday morning services just like uh, every everybody else. But folks, they're they're being taught wrong. Um, there's a lot of materialism involved. A lot of other false areas of false doctrine that are wrong. And the Bible says that they will ride upon the beast. That's the Antichrist in the Book of Revelation here. They will ride upon the beast, and then the beast will turn and devour. So, in other words, they will use the government and use a, a system and ride on it. But when the, the and for a while, the society will be tolerant. The uh, powers that be that are antichrist will be tolerant of of that particular church and will use it. But when it no longer needs it anymore, the antichrist will destroy it. Meanwhile, the Lord is also raising up the wheat, a remnant church a church that doesn't compromise, a church that, that's looking for holiness and purity that walks the right way. Which one are you going to be? Which one is a member of a church are you? Well, we find that out as we get into the, the book and we read. So let's get into it. Um, I'll save a couple of uh, short announcements for afterwards, but let's go ahead and begin again. This is a study in the Word, folks, so I'm not really here to preach to you as much as we read the Word of God together. Tonight, I'll be reading out of the New King James uh, version of the Bible, that translation. Uh, if you have another translation, that's okay. Just follow along, and uh, I'm sure that you'll be fine. Okay, so let's just begin. We're in chapter 3 in the book of Revelation, and we'll begin with verse 1. Okay, and to the angel of the church, remember what angel is, okay? When... Uh, the Lord is addressing the angel of the church. We know in the Greek that the 
Uh, name for an angel is a messenger. Okay, so to the messenger of the church, well, who is the messenger of the church? The messenger is the one that holds the authority. And so uh, the belief among uh, most theologians, okay, is that it's speaking of the pastor or the bishop of that particular church. I tend to believe that's probably true also. However, I don't dismiss the, the what I, my own belief that every church has its own uh, authority or, or, or angel over it. Just like there are principalities and powers over cities and, and things, there are, there, are, there are good and there are bad. There are, are, are demonic and there are godly. Um, Satan has never created anything himself, okay? All he ever does and all he's ever done is counterfeit the truth. He can't create anything. He can't create his own laws or do anything. He can only pervert what already exists. Okay, so here though, I believe that we're, we're talking about to the bishop or to the um, pastor of the church, all right? So he's saying, and to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Okay, well, let, let's talk about this because again, he opens up in his salutation and reveals something about himself. Uh, in this particular uh, salutation, he's saying, Jesus is saying that he holds, or he has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, okay? So, you have to understand what that means, okay? We we know we talked before he had the seven lampstands, and here he has the seven stars. You know, I, I don't want to get into all of that, but I do want to real quickly, because people always ask about this, and they want to know, what are the seven spirits of God? I believe if, um, uh, what, uh, it's, um, it's in the Old Testament. I think it's, I, I want to say Isaiah chapter 11, uh, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to you know, get the scripture. But anyway, to make this simple, if you go to, the, to, the, to that chapter, I can cross-reference it. I just didn't do it, uh, that I'm speaking of. It will tell you that the seven spirits of God are actually seven at different attributes of the Holy Spirit. When he's talking about the seven spirits of God, he's speaking of the Holy Spirit, one spirit with seven attributes uh, uh, involving that particular Holy Spirit. And so we could get, we could study, and maybe what I'll do once we wrap this up is do a study on the seven spirits of God and we'll talk about all of it. It's very plain, it's very evident. It's not seven colors in a rainbow or any stupid thing like that. And I've heard some people say that and preach it's ridiculous, okay? It's right there in the scripture. I just don't, can't remember whether it's the 11th or 17th chapter. I think it's in Isaiah. I wanna say Isaiah 11th, but we'll, 11, but we'll look it up or, you know, you can check it out and cross-reference it or I'll do it next time if, it's, if, if, I, if I remember and think about it. But in any case, the Lord is revealing something about himself. He's reminding people you know that he holds the uh the he is the um how would i say that he that, that he, he has the holy spirit we have the father the son and the spirit but the but th that holy spirit is something that he distri he 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 distributes to the church and that's what he's emphasizing here he says these things says he who has the seven spirits of god and seven stars i know your works that you have a name that you are alive. In other words, they, I know your works, that you have a, a reputation. They had a reputation that they were alive. In other words, I, I would like to say that this is not only a the dead church, is the, it, 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 it's referenced in, um, in many Bibles, okay, but it, it's the this is it or we're, we're it church because they, they had or were claiming to, to that they were alive, they had something special, maybe a new revelation, maybe this is the place to go. We've really got it. We've got things together. This is where God is moving now. He's not moving anyplace else, but he's moving right here. And there was a certain arrogance to it, but the problem was, and I do, I do believe that sometimes God does move in certain churches and there are certain events and certain things and a certain uh, revival or a certain spirit of God that maybe has hit one place that hasn't hit other places yet and everything. But the problem is that the fruit has to match what people are claiming. And in this case, we're going to see that it didn't. Okay, so he says, I know your works, that you have a name that you're alive. In other words, that you have a reputation that you say that you're alive. Okay, but he says, but you're dead. You're dead. Be watchful. 
and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. In other words, whatever you've got that is going good for you, strengthen it now because everything else, every, you're at a church that is on the decline, you are dying. Folks, we live in a generation right now where there are many churches that fall in this category that at some point in time, they had something, but they are dying. If not dead, totally dead already. And that was the case of this church. It, this church definitely needed CPR because it was on life support. He just says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Folks, that is it right there. Remember, therefore, every Christian, every person that's listening to me tonight, okay, you need to go back and remember how you first received. How did you receive? Because there are people many times will come and tell you you didn't receive the right way. They, they try to get you to question your faith, to even question the foundations of your faith. But if you did it according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in this book, if you did it according to the scriptures and, 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 and you did it, uh, uh, discerningly, with knowledge, and appropriately, and you did it with all of your heart, and you surrendered, you received it the right way. You have to know. So he says, therefore, remember how you've received and how you heard. How you heard. Remember what you heard. Remember how you heard. Remember the Apostle Paul. He says, if anybody comes and they preach a different gospel, even if it's an angel, in, from, uh, that claims to be an angel from heaven, or if it were an angel from heaven, and he preached anything differently than what we've given you, let him be accursed. That's pretty heavy, folks. We need to look. We need to remember our foundations. I remember coming out to um, California <clears throat> before I moved to Arizona, where we live now. And when I moved to California, I was a young man, um, 20 years old, actually, and um just got out of the military, was playing ball and a few other things like that, but got involved in a particular church. And they claimed to be, uh, have the revelation for the future. They were the king, bringing in the kingdom of God. Uh, they were the true body of Christ. They believed that um, uh, we could have a resurrection life and obtain it while we were alive uh, and, and, and that we didn't have to necessarily die, but we could actually achieve Im uh, immortality on this earth if we could just trust Christ enough. And there was a lot of truth, though, in their doctrine. But of course, you've just heard some of the things I've said. Folks, there, there was enough uh, uh, rat poison, enough cyanide in there to kill the, the whole rat, and eventually that whole movement and church died. Okay, but I had initially left the military to become a part of this because I had friends that were involved in it, and as I got in and found out what it was really like, because you see, I didn't really know until I, I came out here and got involved. I only knew what they wanted me to know. But when I got involved and saw how things were, folks, the thing that saved me was I remembered my foundations. I remembered what I had been taught. I remembered my Assemblies of God preacher being faithful and pastoring and, and, and preaching every Sunday morning when I was a kid growing up and I heard the word of God. And, and, and the word came and I knew and there was enough discernment the Lord had given me in, of discernment of spirit and enough of a, a, a wisdom and knowledge to know in my heart this isn't right. And I needed to vacate. I needed to get out. I needed to get away. And I made a break away and I made it okay. I continued on and I, I was shipwrecked for a few years because of the experience. But um, I, I, I found my way back to where God wanted me to be. And, 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 and after that, after some period of time, entered ministry, and I've been in ministry a long time uh, since that, doing things the right way. And I've never compromised the word. And I wondered, why is it, God, that you allowed me to go through a situation like that when all I really wanted to do was do your will? I left the army. I had a good career. I had a lot of things going for me. I left all of that to come out here to be a part of this, for this to happen to me? Why, Lord? And I never got an answer until the day came that I was um, uh, ordained to be the senior pastor of uh, one of the former church I, uh, churches I pastored. And as I was on my way to church, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, he said, do you know why I let you go through that situation? I, I, I didn't hear the Lord audibly, but 
the thought came, but it came amplified. So you knew it wasn't your normal human thought, but it was the Lord speaking. It was very, very loud, like four or five times louder than your normal thoughts. And so I knew, I recognized very quickly for me that that was God speaking to me. And so when he asked me that question, I said, no, why God? I actually asked out loud in response to the question. And the Lord spoke and said, because you see, I wanted to, to put you through that so that you would see for yourself firsthand what false doctrine and, 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 uh, and um, abusive, uh, abusive author spiritual authority can do. He said, the reason I wanted you to see it is because if I told you or if somebody else told you, you would never have believed it or understood it. The only way for you to have understood it was to go through it yourself so that you could teach others. And when you did come to a place in ministry and minister to others, that you wouldn't do the same thing. And so from that time, I have been very careful never to abuse authority, very careful always to speak the truth. Um, it has never been about me. Uh, it's never been about materialism or money or fame or wealth. I've had all the opportunities, folks, okay? I've had uh, people in mega churches ask me to pastor their church. I've had, uh, I've had others ask me to join their churches. I've had every opportunity from television to all types of other things. Folks, I have turned those situations and opportunities away and down so I could do what I'm doing now because God has given me a mandate. He's told me what he wants me to do. And, and it involves really just sticking to the word of God, preaching the word of God truthfully, accurately. I'm, I'm not in it. I don't take, I haven't, I haven't taken an offering anywhere that I, that, that I've preached since I've been in ministry for myself. Okay. In the sense that I, I, I don't matter if I, I never, I, today I never take offerings anywhere. If somebody wants to give me a love offering, that's fine. I think when I passed our churches, of course, we took offerings because we had to keep the lights on, pay the bills and, and things like that. But in our ministry as it exists today, where I go and I speak at a lot of different churches and do the things I do, we do it on the 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 um, uh, the finances that the Lord has just given us uh, and blessed us with, and we don't collect it. We don't ask for an offering, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking an offering, but I'm just saying that my emphasis in in, in ministry is not materialistic. Uh, I don't, in other words, I I don't want to link taking an offering with materialism. But what I'm trying to say is this. There are some people in ministry and they want you to give to this, give to that, give to this, give to that. They invent things to, for you to give to. And then they keep on asking and really they're, they're lining their pockets. And I don't think everybody's that way, but there are some that are that way. And they use the gospel, as the Bible says, for sordid gain. Sordid gain means with greed. But the word of God says we're not to use the gospel for sordid gain, to gain money and, and do it in an unscrupulous uh, way or to use it for our own greed and our own wants and desires and things that we really don't need. And so I've just stayed away from that. I don't ask for that. And uh, if somebody gives a lot of offering, I certainly will, will uh, accept it. Uh, that's their, them exercising their faith. If they want us on to this ministry, that's fine. But I never ask for it. Okay, so, um, and I think that's important that we walk the right way uh, and we walk conscientiously before the Lord. But see, that wasn't happening in this church. And so he goes on to tell him, remember how you received things in the beginning, what you heard, and then hold fast. And he says, repent. Repent means that if you're going left and, you, or, and you're, making, you're, 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 you're going the wrong direction, that you do an about face and go right. You, you go the opposite way. This is how we have to walk. That is what repentance means. It doesn't mean just I'm sorry. That's a good start. But being sorry, folks, doesn't uh, isn't repentance. There are a lot of people that are sorry uh, you know, that that are in hell. There are a lot of people that have committed crimes. They're sorry for crimes they've committed. But if they were let out of prison, they'd go back and do the same thing all over again. Folks, repentance is a change of mind. It is a change of heart. It is a change of direction. You were going left, go right. You were going north, go south. You were doing, uh, you were going uh, 180 degrees one way, go 180 degrees back the other way. That's repentance. It, 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 and so that's what we have to do. And so he's telling them, you need to repent. Remember where, what you learned. Remember how, what you received. Remember what you heard. Then hold fast to that, not to, to, to what's going on now, not to these other things. Okay. But um, 
and then repent. Repent of where you're at right now and get back on track. This is what the Lord is saying. This is his admonishment to the church of Sardis. All right? So he says, Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Okay, now, I don't think this is talking about the rapture, folks. But he uses it as the same analogy that we've heard when we refer to the rapture and, and everything. But he is saying, look, if you don't repent, you don't do what I tell you to do, if you don't pay attention, if you don't watch, if you're not alert, if you're not going to pay attention, I will come upon you as a thief. What is he going to take? Well, when we read... What a thief steals, right? A thief takes things away. But when we got in, in chapter one, the Lord says, go back and do the deeds you did at first, lest I remove your lampstand from your midst. What is a lampstand? It's a light. A lampstand is made to give light. And these seven churches were seven lampstands. Seven churches were seven lampstands because the church was meant, all seven of them, to give light to the world. But the Lord is saying, if you don't come back and repent, and do the deeds that you did at first, I will remove your light. The church may still be there. The preacher may still be there. The musicians may still be there. The choir may still be there. And people may still be there, but the light is gone. And folks, today, there are there are some cities, literally, and I've been in them, that have a church on every corner of a street, north, south, east, and west. And in many churches, I'd say probably about 90% of churches today Folks, the the the, lamp, the light has been removed. The lamp stand has been taken out. You got a church and you got religion, but there is no light. We don't want to be like that. See, and, and you say, well, geez, ninety that seems like a lot. Well, folks, sixty five in sixty five A.D. just after the church began, of these seven churches that were a model and barometer for Christ to come in and critique for our purposes, five of them are at, at, just in sixty five A.D. by just in that short period of time had already apostatized and were failing. Only two passed the muster. See, this is what we have to understand, okay? So he goes on to say, therefore, if you'll, you'll, you'll not watch, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. It could happen every any time. Don't take God for granted. Things can happen at any point in time. Um. And so don't don't take God for granted. Just do what's right. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, he says you, then he goes on to say, verse four, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. What he's saying here is you, there are a few people, names of people. You have a few people and a few names, even in Sardis, even in, even in this church. You know, even in, 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 in I've, I've been in some, I don't want to say bad churches, but some pretty bad places. But there's there there I, in 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 many of those places there were some good people that were still hanging on, and really wanted and hungry and really wanted to walk with God and that's what he's saying. He's saying you have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. And it's in the righteousness of Christ. We we stand in His righteousness. Our robes are white because we're made white. We're made lily white and clean. Um, doesn't the Bible say that? Come, let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, I shall make you as white as snow. See, we wear the what garments of, of, of praise and the garments of glory and the garments of God by not our own righteousness, but by standing in his righteousness through our submission and relationship to him based on what he did on the cross for us. Amen? And, he, and, and through the cross, he brings reconciliation that uh, between man and God, a, a, a relationship that man had lost when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. All right, so um, thank God for the cross, for what he's done and what he wants to do in every church. There was hope even for, for the church of Sardis. As dead as it was, there was still hope. So anyway, let's go back. Okay, he says, for you have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. Okay, what made them worthy? The fact that they were obedient. The fact that they uh, remembered what they had received and what they had heard. The fact they held fast to those things and the fact that they were willing 
to repent where repentance was needed. See, we need to have a tender heart towards the Lord. We need to ask God through the Holy Spirit to search our hearts so that we could be clean before him. And as churches, folks, we need to do this. For those of you throughout the, the, the world that watch this broadcast, and there are many, um, and you're pastors of churches, you need to have this heart and, and, and this mind as you minister to your flock. And for those of us that attend the churches and that are Christians and we're in various aspects of ministry or maybe not in any um, well, five-fold ministries at all, but, but we still are required to walk this way if we want to be blessed, all right? So let's kind of continue here. Um, verse, um, uh, let's go to verse five. Uh, he who overcomes, he who overcomes, overcoming what? All this stuff, okay? All the, 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 the traps and pitfalls and roadblocks and uh, things that the enemy has laid in front of the church. We can overcome in Christ if we just put our faith in him and walk with him. It's not so much um, about trying in the flesh to make something happen as it is simply opening up our hearts and spirits to the Lord and, and, and loving him and letting him work in us so that things can happen. Um, I hope that you, you understand the difference. I, I don't have a lot of time to get into it tonight, but uh, I, I, I'm sure, you know, if you think about it, you'll understand. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Well, it's a controversial scripture for some people because there are some people that don't believe that their names can be blot be blotted out of the book of life. And it's a thorn in the side scripture for some that believe that once you're saved, you're always saved, right? We've all heard that. I don't believe either that anyone can take your salvation from you. But, but I believe you can take it from yourself. I believe you can walk away. I don't believe the devil can take my salvation. I don't believe any other person on this earth can take my salvation. But I, just like I made a decision to come to the altar or to or in my bedroom somewhere, I made a, a, a decision to surrender and ask Jesus Christ into my life. He's given me free will. If I want to, I can change my mind and say, you know what, I don't want it anymore I, I, and I'm done. And there are people in this world that have done that. The Bible talked about Demas who once walked with us and now has forsaken us because he's loved the world. The Bible talks about those that walked with us but are now enemies. I tell you weeping that they are now enemies of the cross of Christ. And I've heard the uh, certain, uh, certain <laughs> I started to say it, so uh, let me back. Uh, uh, you didn't hear that. Okay, I've heard, I've heard certain denominations and groups say, well, you know, if they... If they went into sin, they were never Christians to begin with, and I doubt they were ever saved. I don't believe that. I believe there were a lot of people that were saved, but what happened was they got out from under God's covering. The devil got into their uh, mind. They were tempted uh, with uh, things of the world. They were tempted by relationships and other things and that were not God's will, and uh, for whatever reason, they went astray and they didn't come back. And the word says that can happen. People can be given over to a reprobate mind where they don't want to come back. People can blaspheme the Holy Spirit where they commit the unpardonable sin. You know, when we talk about reprobate minds, about blasphemy, about names being written off the book of, uh, out of the book of life, uh, these are all things that were folks, weren't, they weren't written to people out in the world, okay? They were written to Christians. These, are being, these, these writings are being written to believers, to people that have already made a decision to accept Christ in their life. You know, there's a scripture in Galatians that says that if you continue in the faith, so that means that you can continue or not continue, you know. So, I mean, we could shred that doctrine pretty easily if we really wanted to, but I'm not here to do that tonight. I just want to go ahead and, and move on with the lesson that we have. So he goes on to say, <clears throat> he who <clears throat> overcomes shall be uh, clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out, blot out his name from the book of life. I believe every person, when they're born, their name is in the book of life. I believe that. But I believe that it can be removed. Amen? And thank God, I, I believe that 
uh, my, I, mine is still in there. And if they can't find it under Misha Softie, if I get to the gates of heaven, I'll ask them to look under my adopted name or anywhere else. But uh, I sure hope and pray to God that it will be there. And I think it will, you know, by the grace of God and by his mercy. But nothing but that, I, that I'm going to be able to do in my own flesh. Amen. Uh, amen. But there are things that we can do, and that is to remember what we've received and what we've heard, hold fast, and repent, as we've already talked about. So anyway, okay, he says, I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Not guilty. His name is Misha. He belongs in heaven with us. Amen. By my grace. This is what the Lord is going to say. And he's going to give us a new name and a, a mansion in heaven. I don't know what that's going to look like, but um, I'll tell you what. I'd rather have that than anything the devil has to offer in hell or anything in this world, okay, that we take for a very short time because life is short, folks. Okay, it goes by fast. I remember when I was three years old. I remember things when I was like I was six years old, like they happened yesterday. I'm not a young guy anymore. I may look young. But I'm not, you know, and so uh, time goes fast. All right, we're not going to be here forever, folks. So don't sell your soul to something that uh, you can't take with you or that's going to land you in a place that you don't want to be. All right. So anyway, I will bl I not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. You know, he who has an ear, let him hear. We all have ears, folks, but how, the question is, are we open enough to listen? If you really have an ear to hear, then hear. If you have an ear to hear what God is saying, if you have a heart to hear, then listen. Listen with your heart and do something about it. Walk in it, act on it, move in it. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So that is going to be our study in the Word this evening. I want to make a quick announcement, so don't leave me now. Don't click off and say, "Okay, we're done." Um, give me one second. Give me, give me, give me a minute, two minutes. All right. If you're on Facebook uh, live, following me, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Please like the posts and um, again, and please share them if it's helped you. Share it with others because you all have friends that I don't have on my Facebook live that need to hear the Word of God. And this is a way that you can contribute without sending an offering by hitting your share button. You can get, you can join our ministry and get the Word out to other people. Likewise, okay, there are many, many people that follow and watch. Um, not only they, they, they are not only here on Facebook Live, but they do follow and watch on, on YouTube. If you are one of those, um, please hit the bell and subscribe. I need subscribers, folks. I've got tons of listeners from all around the world. And um, and um, and I thank you. I really do. But I need subscriptions because the more subscriptions that I have, what, what, what that does is it uh, increases the the algorithm the algorithms, okay, within YouTube increase the amount of feeds or, or, or the uh, degree that my messages go out to other people. So let's say that somebody is having an issue maybe with uh, they want to kill themselves. They're going through things. They are on the verge of suicide. So they're, 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 they're contemplating. Maybe they Google different ways to kill yourself to commit suicide. And then the, in, in the midst of all that, guess what? They get a message on their Facebook page, one of my messages that talks about the, the, the dangers of suicide or you don't have to kill yourself or something like that. Folks, that's how we get the word of God out and how we minister to the world. And we have people from Pakistan, from um, uh, Asia, from Europe, from all over the world that watch these broadcasts. I know who they are. Uh, famous people, folks, from the entertainment industry. Folks, politicians, presidents, and presidents' wives from Washington, D.C., okay, that have come on to this broadcast that you are watching right now and that watch the broadcast and have let me know that they watch the broadcast. All right, so what I'm trying to say is, am I great? No, that's not the point. The point is we want to see revival break out. We need it in Washington, D.C. right now. We need people that know the Lord. We are in trouble in this country. In the entertainment industry, we don't need the smut 
that is coming across our televisions and in front of our children every day and perverting our, our society. We need revival in Hollywood, folks. We need to, to, to get into the medical field. We need revival there. In every area on this earth, we need the Word of God to permeate the crap and the antichrist demonic stuff that is taking place in the society to bring this, this world uh, down and to, to, to try to destroy what, what God is, is doing. And they're not going to succeed. But folks, you can have a hand in getting the Word of God out if you'll just um, do something simple. It takes a minute, maybe two, three minutes to sign on to YouTube. And if you're on Facebook and you never go on YouTube, sign on, look at my name right there, uh, Misha Softier. Just, go, just, just put it in the search and you'll find two or 300 messages because I, put, I post everything up there. All right, or look under End Time Ministries with Misha Softier and, and um, you'll find the same messages. Just hit the bell and subscribe. Please do that. You'll be doing me a favor or else, folks, look, I'm giving my time to you guys. I'm not doing this because I haven't got anything else to do. I got a lot of other things I could be doing. I don't even know half the time who's listening because I, I, don't, I don't watch who signs on and who, who doesn't uh, while I'm bringing the message anyway. So, so folks, it, this is not about me. It's not because I don't have other things to do. I got a speaking schedule. I could be anywhere at, on any night all over California and all over, and, and, and more increasingly so here in Arizona too. So it's because this is a, an opportunity to get the word of God out. We use written media. I've written two books. I'm on number three right now. That's what's on my computer right now as I'm working on number three. And, they, and many of them are in Barnes & Noble, um, or two of them are in Barnes & Noble here and maybe some others. And I know the books are being in bookstores internationally. Um, they're on Amazon. I have Amazon as my uh, publisher and, and so forth and so on. So they can be ordered there. I, I use uh, written media. I use social media. That's why I'm here. Okay, because there are people that maybe can't make it to church. Maybe they don't go to church. Maybe they don't want to go to church. But they're they're, they're hungry. They're listening. They're, they're, their lives are a mess. They, they need change. They need help. So we want to touch them. We want to minister a true word. Not a much of the crap, some of the baloney that I've seen on television and even on YouTube and other places. But get the true uh, word of God. We want to get that to them. We need that. And so, folks, you're contributing by helping me to get that here through social media. So please become a member. And then we use, uh, I, I go to churches too. I do evangelistic outreach. I speak in a number of churches and, and, and other, all over the place. Uh, folks, we want to stay busy. We, 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 the, the Bible says that we need to work while it's day for the night cometh that no man shall be able to work. We're living in those times now and it's time for us to get busy. So please help me help others. I appreciate it. Listen, keep your feet to the ground. Keep your head to the sky. God willing, um, I will see you next Tuesday night at, not 8.30, sorry, I ran late, <clears throat> but 8 p.m., that's our start time, okay? So I hope you'll join me then. May God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.